Most people come to Northern Ontario for the wilderness and the wildlife. Rugged shorelines, pristine lakes, and the lonely call of the loon. But decades ago, people were drawn to this remote part of the Canadian Shield for the mining. There was a fortune in gold to be made if you picked the right rocky outcrop. Today, there are still people searching the rocks, but not for flakes of precious metals. These prospectors are searching for Martians. What we're looking for here is some signs of life that once uh, existed about 2.7 billion years ago on the planet. Neil Banerjee and his team have been credited with finding evidence of ancient life on three different continents. But today, he's looking even further afield, and he's called in some specialized help. If you're on Mars, Nadim, okay, and you're driving along, right, on rocks or something, and you're taking pictures, right, with your rover or whatever, and you're seeing these fragmental textures, you start to get really kind of excited because you see sort of the textures that you're interested in. MDA Corporation, the robotics company that built the Canadarm, has sent an engineer to this outcrop to see if a robot could do the same prospecting on the surface of Mars. What struck me is how close or how high resolution the, the rover image would have to be to, to, to spot something like this if it, was, if it was operating as an autonomous geologist. What they're looking for, both here and eventually on Mars, are signs of ancient life. These are microorganisms, microscopic uh, organisms, things like bacteria. They're single-celled organisms. And what we think is happening is that these microorganisms are colonizing glassy rocks on the seafloor and using these glassy volcanic rocks as a nutrient source. All these microscopic organisms leave little channels or tunnels in these glassy rocks. And it's these channels and tunnels that we're looking for. These tunnels end up becoming filled with material, and the material that fills them is a mineral, and it's this mineral that allows us to date how old these tunnels are. While the geologists look for microscopic tunnels, the engineer from MDA is looking for a clear path to the site. To get to an, uh, an area of geological interest, we had to clamber down over a number of rocks, um, quite a steep slope that was quite slippery. Now, for humans, that's quite... Um, that was quite trivial to do, but trying to do that with a rover, um, trying to do that is non-trivial. The hilly terrain's not a coincidence. These rocks are the remains of a volcano that erupted underneath the sea nearly three billion years ago. Today's site was chosen because of its geological similarity to Olympus Mons, a giant volcano on Mars. This is the kind of thing that we would be looking for because these fragmental rocks may have actually interacted with water on the surface of Mars and may have been a place where life could have colonized those rocks. Speaking of water, the rain starts to fall just as the team prepares to drill. On Earth, the drill is diamond, water-cooled, and it runs on gasoline. Uh, on a rover or a lander, power is a very valuable commodity, and so all of the, the, the maneuvering of a drill that you saw here, all the positioning and operation of a drill has to be done for tens of watts, which is the same kind of uh, energy that's required to power a light bulb. The earthbound drill also takes plenty of manpower to hold it steady. You saw how, how many people it takes to nudge and kick and um, maneuver a drill. There's a lot of manual intervention required, so it's particularly tricky. Um, uh, the, the whole autonomous control of drill systems. I think that's pretty good. The hole is cut, but the job is not yet done. Well, the next step is to get this core out of the rock, and that involves a little bit of luck. And some high-tech tools. We use screwdrivers and a hammer and wedge the screwdriver inside, and hopefully the core will break at the bottom and not on a fracture somewhere in the middle. Barbecue tongs it is. A broken core is a mere nuisance here on Earth. If it's stuck in the bottom, we have to use some barbecue tongs. That's what we use to get these cores out. But on Mars, that could be a disaster. With the expenses of space exploration, you can't have a, a, a drill system fail. When you've spent 500 million, 300 million on a mission to get to Mars, the drill has to work, and the drill can't get stuck. Once the core is removed, it's taken back to a lab at the University of Western Ontario. A thin slice is cut, and the glassy fragments are examined for the telltale tunnels. On Mars, however, returning the rock to a fully staffed lab is not yet an option. 
I think it's certainly in the, in the, the next few missions we'll be doing in situ analysis of the sample, but sample return is the, uh, is the holy grail of Mars exploration. Gazing up at the red planet, it seems like a long shot. Getting there, finding the right spot, drilling a core sample, getting it to a lab, and cutting it open to find microscopic tunnels left by ancient life forms two and a half billion years ago. It's tough work in northern Ontario. It'll be even harder on Mars. The secrets of the Earth are best written in these rocks, and it's up to geologists to try and decipher those secrets and understand uh, whether or not these same types of secrets that we find on the Earth may actually exist on Mars. So whether it's on Mars or here on Earth, the search for life starts with a combination of rocks and water.